Today again, two ayat that I'd like to compare that are very similar in the Qur'an. You'll notice this pattern in many of the episodes that I'll compare two ayat that occur in different places in the Qur'an that are similar to each other. People complain, why is the Qur'an repeating itself so much? Actually, that's part of its literary marvel. It's these ayat that are similar and only differentiated with a, with a very subtle distinction and that subtlety is where the, where the juice lies. So let's explore that today. Surah Fussilat, this is surah number 41. And we're going to compare an ayah from it to Surah Al-A'raf, which is Surah number 7. Both of them begin exactly the same way. That's identical in both ayat. Let me tell you what that means. If and when, if at all, there is a poke at you from the shaitan of any kind. If the devil pokes at you, whispers to you, tempts you, gets you to do something, suggests something to you in any way, shape or form. Seek refuge of Allah then seek refuge of Allah. Okay, that, that's identical to both. If the devil's bothering you, seek refuge of Allah. Fine. إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Certainly he, he truly is the one who hears, who knows. السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ That's in Surah Fussilat. إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ In Surah Al-A'raf, he says, إِنَّهُ سَمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Certainly he is hearing, knowing. Let me compare the, the ending again. Certainly he is truly the one, the hearing one, the knowing one. There's an emphatic nature here. The other, إِنَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ Certainly he hears, he knows. So in other words, in one case, it's almost as though Allah is telling me that I need to remember more that he hears and more that he knows. He's emphasizing it even more. I better not lose conscious of the fact that he's hearing and knowing in one of these ayat. And I should be aware of it, but not nearly as intensely in the other. So what makes them different? In Surat Fusilat, in which it is more emphatic. Actually, no, I'll start with the less emphatic. I'll start with Araf. خُذِ العف. وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ He says right before, he says, hold on to forgiveness. And speak and, and command people to decency. You know, hold on to forgiveness, meaning people are being obnoxious with you, and you're going to be kind and respond with forgiveness. And then you're going to call people to decency. And then وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ And ignore those who uh, act out of emotion. You know, ignore the obnoxious, basically. Jahil is someone who doesn't have control over their emotions. And then in that context, when somebody's arguing with you and they're demeaning you and you're supposed to hold on to forgiveness because it's not, your, every, every cell in your body is saying, I should respond. Allah says, hold on to forgiveness. Then he says, just speak decently. In other words, if they're losing their cool and, not, and speaking indecently, you still command to decency. And if none of that's working, you just need to ignore people who lose their cool. أَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ Okay. And in that context, Allah said, when the shaitan is poking at you, what is the poke of the shaitan? You want to respond to him in kind, with the anger and the tone that they're speaking to you in. And if you respond in kind, that is the shaitan winning with his pokes against you. At that point, you need to know that Allah is hearing what you have to say. إِنَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ He's hearing, he's knowing. That's one context. But the other context, Allah says, وَلَا تَسْتَوِي الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةُ Good and evil are not the same. Respond with what is better. Similar, isn't it? Respond with what is better. It's also about responding. But listen. Even if there is animosity between you and the one you speak with, the one between him and you, there's animosity. This guy's not just ignorant with you, he's not just obnoxious with you, he's become an enemy to you. It is as though he is your protective, close, intimate friend. Not only should you ignore him this time, you must now treat him as an intimate friend. <laughs> Not allow your cool to be lost. And then he says, وَمَا يُلَقَّهَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صبروا. That level is not going to be reached or met with by anyone except people who uh, have the ultimate patience. وَمَا يُلَقَّهَا إِلَّا ذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ And nobody's going to be meeting that level except people that are highly fortunate. This is not something small. So I want you to understand the comparison here. You're talking to somebody who's aggressive, but in one case, they're far more aggressive. They're like an enemy to you. In one case, you're told, just forgive what they're saying, keep it cool, call to decency, and if they really get out of hand, just walk away. Just walk away. But in the second case, you're being told, don't walk away. Actually, treat them like an intimate friend. <laughs> That's almost impossible. And so he says, yeah, I know. It's almost impossible. It's for people who have incredible patience and who are incredibly fortunate with that thick of a skin. Then he says, if the shaitan pokes at you, seek, seek refuge. He is the ultimate one that's hearing. He really is listening. 
he's the knowing. He emphasizes his hearing and his knowing here like he didn't in the other case. Because man, what it takes to remember that Allah is listening and be, remain friendly to someone who's being an enemy to you. Oh, you better keep in mind that Allah is listening and Allah is knowing. That little emphasis changes everything. Allah acknowledges how much harder something is. Just between innahu sami'un alim and innahu huwa sami'un alim. May Allah Azza wa Jal help us appreciate the wisdom, the power, and as a matter of fact, the acknowledgement in the Quran. Allah acknowledges my emotions and yours, what we have to go through when we obey Him, the challenges we have to face when we obey Him. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us love His word more and more and more with every passing day.